So uh, when I first put out this video, uh, people immediately noted that what they saw was a, a glaring mistake. Uh, the video of Ushiba I was using of him was uh, not Ikkyo Undo, but one called either Funakogi or Torifune. The need to address uh, any of the substance of the video was neatly avoided by these uh, detractors by saying my Torifune mistake invalidated the main points I made in the original video, um, the video which this is now an introduction to. The irony is that not only does my mistake not reduce the validity of my points from the original video, in some ways it actually strengthens them. Um, the explanation for why this is the case uh, has been added to the end of this video, but the upshot of the video uh, is that it could just as easily have been called What Happened to Torifune? And so I'll be back at the end of this original version of the video. Of course, this is Morihei Ushiba, the founder of Aikido, performing what he described as a fundamental exercise called Ikkyo Undo. And this is almost all of the videos I could find on YouTube of Bon Aikiroka doing the same exercise today. Clearly, there is a difference between how they do it and how Ushiba did it, with that difference being sometimes pretty radical. Even Tohei Sensei, a direct student of Ushiba, apparently did the exercise quite differently, but in all these examples, the difference I'm talking about is perhaps not quite what you may be thinking. It's not about the angle of the arms, or the positioning of the hands, or the tempo of the exercise is done. No, uh, the difference I'm referring to is far deeper. Uh, it's far more fundamental. It's how biomechanically the movements of Ikkyo are being generated. This difference is extremely important for two main reasons. Without these mechanics, the exercise can't be used for the purpose I believe it was meant for. And second, if you don't practice Ikkyo Undo using basically the same mechanics that Ushiba used, in my opinion, you'll never understand the purpose of Ikkyo Undo. You may get an inkling, but no more than that. You can see this lack of understanding of the exercise, not only in the videos of it being practiced, but also in what people say it is actually helpful with. But here's the thing, while Ikkyo Undo may indeed be helpful with all those things, the level of improvement is going to be slight. It, it's rather like saying that if you do a lot of walking, then your understanding of walking and your skill at walking will continue to improve, which of course it doesn't. There is simply no way Ishiba would have advocated Ikkyo Undo for these reasons, it just doesn't teach you enough. So what is Ikkyo Undo for then? Well, three things. Power generation, structural strength, and physical conditioning. And how do I know this? Because it would appear that as far as I can tell, um, for more than 40 years, I've been doing many of the same types of training as Ushiba did. Specifically, the training he received from Daitaru and through his Shinto-like practices. So, I'm not claiming to use exactly the same methodology and mechanics as Ushiba. I think that Ushiba was Ushiba's was more sophisticated and of course he was better at it than me. However, um, I believe the fundamentals of the mechanics are the same. Specifically in regard to the level of emphasis placed on uh, low abdominal breathing and the level of integration of the hara into all movement. That's why when I recently tried Ikkyo Undo for the first time, it looked far closer to Ushiba's version of it than those online examples I just showed. And the same applies to my senior student who's been following the same method as me for about 13 years. It's worth noting that um, my school does not teach Aikido. Uh, we do have a small Aiki syllabus and we have a splattering of unarmed kata that are considered fundamental. However, the vast majority of what we teach is focused on armed combat. So when we tried Ikkyo Undo, we did try to basically visually match Ushiba. Okay. But the only instruction I gave myself and my student was to raise our arms with intent as moving forward and then pull them back with intent to the waist as our weight moved back. But uh, just from using our mechanics, it immediately became obvious why Ushiba placed so much importance on Ikkyo Undo. 
One of the first things we noticed about it is just how physically tough it is. Very strenuous. It may not look like it would be, but it's actually very hard work after only about 10 reps. Um, now, maybe this level of exertion lessens with practice, but I would guess not by much because the better you get at it, the more taxing it's going to get. I know from experience of similar exercises. One of the main reasons for it being so strenuous is the effort required to stop the arm movement at both the raise and the retraction, but especially the raise. And the reason it takes so much effort to stop is because of the power behind the movement. And that's not so much the momentum generated by the movement, but the force behind the movement, if that makes sense. Ikkyo undo power is definitely not from swinging your arms. It is about lifting them and withdrawing them using those mechanics I just mentioned. And because of this, Ikkyo undo is definitely not a warm-up exercise when done even with the, the smallest amount of intent. The harrow-driven mechanics create power far beyond what Ikkyo undo is capable of through the, the methods that were being used in the videos I just showed. What do I mean by structural strength? It's the ability to resist and tolerate external forces. Uh, this can be when actively applying power, uh, then structural strength prevents the body from collapsing, whether it be in a single joint or far more systemic, um, or structural strength can be needed to passively resist force. Okay. How does Ikkyo Undo promote structural strength? Well, the basic breathing, hara, whole body movement mechanics help with structural strength anyway in a variety of subtle ways uh, which we won't go into here but the Ikkyo Undo movements themselves help to both test and develop structural strength due to the, the need to accommodate for resist and or tolerate the physical forces generated both in terms of stopping the movements and resisting them at the point when a movement starts or during the movement. It's hard to describe, but it's, it's a little like staying stable while being buffeted in a crowd. Uh, but in this case, the buffeting is sort of coming from inside you. Physical conditioning is simply a side effect of the body dealing with what I've already covered. Um, so it's from dealing with the power behind the movements and what the body does to accommodate for the forces and strain this power creates within the body. The degree of conditioning that can be achieved by practicing Ikkyondo in the manner I've described was evident when I went all Deadpool and used a maximum effort to try and launch my 270 pound student. Uh, this was way too much for my structure and uh, it somewhat buckled because of this. But despite trying this several times and having an inherited lower back weakness, um, I did not injure myself. And that brings me to my last point. Uh, I do not recommend trying to replicate the level of force that I've talked about and, and uh, demonstrated here in the videos uh, for Ikkyo Undo, um, unless it is the result of following a, a regimen like I've described. Uh, and as I have said, it is an extremely strenuous exercise done that way, um, which can put considerable strain on your body in lots of both subtle and not very subtle ways. Um, it needs to be practiced very slowly to begin with and in the context of the appropriate breathing regimen and associated exercises. But don't let that put you off. Uh, Ikkyo Undo is a wonderful exercise and I can guarantee that it's really worth the effort to learn to do it with the mechanics I described. It will then be something that you will want to practice all your life. You will understand why you're practicing it and you will see real tangible improvements in the three areas that we've discussed in this video. So now this is the explanation I mentioned at the beginning of the video uh, in the prologue for why my using the wrong video of Hashiba not only doesn't invalidate the points I just made in the video you just saw, but in some ways actually adds to their validity. First, this is Hashiba's version of Ikkyo Endo in the source video, at least I think it is. It is still very different from the versions available on YouTube. And when I tried it, my version of Ikkyo Endo still looks far more like Ushiba's than these other guys, despite my never practicing it before. And lastly, anyone who thinks that me confusing the exercises is important 
Well, they're just illustrating my point from the video that you just watched. That if you don't do the exercise with the correct mechanics, um, you will not understand the purpose of the exercises and you will not be able to use them for their original purpose. Torofune and Ikkyo Undo are different, but only in the way like two gears in the same gearbox are different. And I mean that almost completely metaphorically um, and just a little bit literally. If someone wants to explain how third gear works in a car, and it turned out that they used, as an illustration, a video of a car driving in second gear, would it diminish the explanation of how the third gear works? No. This is why, when I tried Torofune for the first time, once again, my version looks a lot like Ushiba's version. That this fundamental knowledge of the mechanics of Ushiba used is missing in all but a tiny percentage of Aikido today can be seen as much in Torofuni as it can in Ikkyo Undo. As I said in the video earlier regarding Ikkyo Undo, people don't really know why they're doing Torofuni. They could search for justification by saying, as one comment did, for all the exercises in the Aikido set, but what is the rationale for this? Where is the evidence that it works? Can this development um, happen if the exercises aren't done like Ushiba did them? Another justification for the exercise um, might be those listed earlier for Ikkyo Undo. But like Ikkyo Undo, uh, what can be achieved in these departments by Torofune is extremely limited and those limits are very easily achieved. Now, some people think that Torofune stimulates Masogi, and that's why it's uh, different to Ikkyo Undo. But why is Torofune more suited to this, to Masogi, than Ikkyo Undo, or any of the other exercises in the Aiki Taiso, or any other movement for that matter? Is it because of the associated vocalizations, as some comments suggested? Um, how is it different to doing Ikkyo Undo with vocalizations? Similarly, when breathing methods are applied. I started my study of these types of breathing uh, when I was about 15 years old, and I can tell you that applying them to Torofuni does not have any special effect compared to Ikkyo Undo. Um, just because it's a traditional movement doesn't mean it's understood or done right. There's just many, many examples in just Japanese martial arts that indicate that um, that isn't necessarily the case. Um, and anyway, um, take this video for instance, and any other one I could find of um, people doing it in the uh, Masogi type context. Um, these, the guys are not doing anything like Ushiba did it. Okay, so maybe it doesn't matter how you do Torofune, so far as using the exercise to achieve the Masogi effects. If so, I ask again, what is it about the basic Torofune rowing type X action that lends itself to Musogi more than any other movement. Those who think Torofuni is designed for Musogi won't have an answer to this question because there isn't anything. The only difference in the two exercises is in the variations in the mechanics I've been talking about. To use the same metaphor as before, Ikkyo Undo and Torofuni are like different gears. That comparison, um, again, is only slightly literal. But, like I said in the main video, you can't understand what I really mean by that without personally experiencing Torofune or Ikiondo using mechanics at least somewhat like Ushiba used. As demonstrated in these YouTube um, comments on my original video, uh, it doesn't matter how, how hard you train in the techniques of Daitoru, which uh, Mr. Bosch is a student of, I understand, or if you've practiced Aikido since 1973, like Mr. Meiro, if you don't include the fundamental elements uh, of Ushiba's mechanics, um, they will not appear to you. To think otherwise is analogous to thinking that if you learn Russian, you're gonna eventually learn French. So to conclude, uh, what happened to Ikkyo and Torofune? Uh, same thing as with uh, Ushiba's Aikido, and at least some branches of the school Ushiba uh, learned his mechanics from, Daitoru. Uh, they got changed because people didn't understand how to do them and therefore didn't know what they were for. And so like Aikido itself, branched off into various interpretations 
based on this lack of understanding. Finally, I'm sure this video will be seen as trashing uh, post Ushiba Aikido. Uh, I must say that I am not in any way saying that uh, because of the loss of the understanding of Ushiba's mechanics, that Aikido is now not a valuable and extremely worthwhile study because um, I honestly believe that it is. Um, however, I think Aikido is damaged when those who study it are not aware of how Ushiba's Aikido was different uh, and how this difference limits what can be achieved uh, by a study of Aikido. Thank you.